Today's topic is part four in our boundaries series. And Tracy, we're talking about setting boundaries in marriage. And here's the point. Healthy boundaries lead to a healthy marriage, and they give you the ability to love selflessly and sacrificially. So Tracy, we're going to talk about setting marital boundaries in four areas. Number one, how you feel. Number two, what you expect. Number three, the work you do. And number four, your time together. So talk us through this first one, setting boundaries with your feelings. Yeah, and we talked about this in week two in the 10 laws of boundaries, but this is really important. Even in your marriage, you alone are responsible for your own emotions. So it's important that you learn how you're feeling and then be brave enough to share that with your spouse. I think a lot of times in marriage, we assume that our spouse is like a mind reader and that we could, they can just, they should be able to tell what's wrong with us. But in a healthy marriage, part of a healthy boundary is that you recognize that you have to control and you have to acknowledge your own emotions. And then if you are upset, it's on you to express that to your spouse so they can do something about it. Who are you thinking of when you say learn how you're feeling? Because I know a lot of people already know what they're feeling, but there might be some people out there who need to learn it. Well, the truth is everybody knows that they have emotions, but I think a lot of people need to grow in the ability of learning to be self-aware and understand their emotions. And really beyond that, and this is where it helps your marriage, is it's one thing to just be like, I'm angry. But it's another thing to unpack it even a little further and be like, why am I angry? Why did what you say or what you didn't do? Why did that make me so mad? Because once you can kind of articulate that and figure out why you internally are upset about something, then you can go to your spouse and say, okay, this is how I'm feeling and here's why. All right. The second area is in your expectations. Your spouse isn't a mind reader, so you need to learn to articulate what you expect and be ready to compromise. So again, for some spouses, they're learning something new. They're learning or they're practicing how to articulate their expectations. Yeah, it's similar to emotions. We all have expectations, which oftentimes leads to our emotions of anger or disappointment. And so what we have to do is stop and say, okay, what just happened there that either didn't meet my expectation or I wish it happened, but it didn't. And I didn't realize I had this expectation for some event or something from my spouse. So the more you can be aware of that, then you can go to your spouse and say, okay, so when I say I want to go out on a date night, it doesn't mean that we're just sitting around watching football on Sunday, but we're doing it sitting next to each other on the couch. You need to be able to say, no, when I say date night, I mean that you plan a meal out, that you make a reservation, that you get the babysitter, you know, be clear about what you expect so your spouse can get on the same page with you and meet those expectations rather than just frustrating you because they didn't know the expectation you had. And what if the husband's expectation is vastly different from the wife's expectation? Does that ever happen in marriage? Well, this is where when we talked about how healthy boundaries help you to love selflessly and sacrificially, if you want a healthy marriage, it can't just be only your way. You have to be able to compromise with your spouse. So just saying like, hey, this is my expectation, that doesn't mean that you always get everything you want in your expectation. So sometimes you might have to compromise and your spouse will be like, well, listen, uh, our budget's too tight. We can't really afford to go out to dinner and get a babysitter. So maybe we eat dinner in and, you know, get the kids to bed early and save the money or whatever. But the point is that you, you want to meet the expectations of your spouse. Your spouse wants to meet your expectations, but you're both willing to compromise to get at least a little bit of what you want, but you may not get all of it. Now, the next area for setting a boundary is in what you do. And here's the point. You can't do everything for everybody, even your marriage. So you need to be honest about your limitations and ask for help. What kind of person, Tracy, needs to set this boundary in the area of tasks? Well, this is more your people-pleasing personality, your compliant personality that just wants to make people happy and keep the peace. And so sometimes in marriage, you have one spouse that's a little more demanding. They want certain tasks or chores to be done on a weekly basis at home. And then you're coming home and it's like, well, I've had a long day at work. I can't get all of these tasks done. And so instead of just trying to like bear through it and get it done and then quietly resent your spouse, it would be better for you to go and say, hey, listen, I want to get these chores done. I want to meet your expectations in these things, but I have a limit where I just, my time or my energy level, I can't do it all maybe in the time frame that you're wanting. What do you say to the couple where one of them has a really strong work ethic and the other one maybe doesn't? 
Well, again, I think that this is where compromise comes back into play. You've got to articulate your expectations. You need to articulate what you're wanting, but then you have to be willing to compromise. And if your spouse who maybe doesn't want to work quite as hard as you do or work slower than you do, you have a choice to make. You can either meet them where they are and say, well, could we at least get this much done? Or do I need to adjust my expectations? Or I just need to let it go? Or does that task mean more than peace and tranquility in our relationship? All right, the fourth area is setting a boundary in your time together. And here's the point, Tracy, you can't spend all your time together as a couple. It's good to ask for free time from your spouse. So this sounds like a specific boundary for a specific couple, maybe where one person has an expectation that's different than the others. Yeah, I think sometimes couples have a misunderstanding that having a hobby that your spouse doesn't have or having friends outside of the marriage is a bad thing. And that if you're in a good marriage, that means you should be together all the time. And that's just not necessarily true. I mean, some couples that might be true for them, but for most couples, it's healthy to have time with just your friends, like, you know, for the wife to go out with just girlfriends and go to a stupid girl movie. And it's good for guys to go play around a golf or you know, to go to a sporting event together, those things can be really healthy for your relationship. And I think what you want to watch out for is that boundary of don't mistake forcing time together to mean that you're intimate and close as a married couple. You can you can be together all the time and be miserable together or have nothing of there's no value to the time you spend together. But boy, you are together. Whereas if you really work at your marriage and you have healthy boundaries in place, then when one of you wants to go out and do something without your spouse, it's not like it has to be a threatening experience. It can be like, great, go and have a good time and I'll look forward to when you come home. But don't be afraid to take time apart. So those are the four areas where you can set boundaries in marriage, how you feel, what you expect, the work you do and your time together. Now, don't forget to check out our resources online for discussion questions that you can use with your spouse or your mentoring couple. And then we'll see you next time as we talk about boundaries and parenting.